the Lakers are a lock to keep Austin Reeves, and it could create major camp issues. Mark Stein reports, they'll pay whatever it takes to keep the player they found undrafted. Last two years, been a nice player for the Lakers. Are the Lakers getting delusional because they found him? And because he plays well with LeBron. So did Matthew Della Vadova. So let's play a game we often play in the NFL with quarterbacks. So let's put up Austin Reeves' numbers for you. Last two years with the Lakers. He averages 10 a game, 2.6 assists, is not necessarily a dead-eye shooter, 36% from uh, three. Uh, the guy... We'll put up a blind resume. The other guy averages more and shoots better, not quite as many assists. Would you create major camp issues for that guy? Who is that guy? Grayson Allen. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not creating major camp issues for Grayson Allen. Let's do it again. Let's play the game, the blind resume game again. Austin Reeves. His plus minus is like uh, 72nd in the NBA. That's with LeBron and Anthony Davis. 10 points, 2.5 assists, 36% shooting. Now, this guy is clearly not as good an offensive player. Who is he? Patrick Beverly. Better defensive player. Most of you can't stand Patrick Beverly. I like him. I think he's annoying. So let's do it again. The Lakers reportedly going to create potential camp issues for Austin Reeves. This guy averages less, but basically is the same player. One bucket less per game. And this player is Mac McClung, who can jump really high. Let's do one more. Again, this is what the story is. Mark Stein reporting the Lakers are going to outbid everybody for Austin Reeves. This guy is clearly a better shooter, slightly better score. This guy's Austin Reeves, but a bit more refined offensively. Would you create major cap space issues for... Kelly Olenek. Guys, everybody's more loyal to what they find. You ever go out with a friend, you see like a garage band or an indie band, and you're like, dude, these guys are the next doors. You're like, maybe screen doors. They're, they're, they're okay. 82 people were at the concert. Are the Lakers falling in love with a kid because they found him? Garage sale prices. I mean, if you're going to be a max player, you got to give me some max qualities. Is his size unique? No. Is his shooting unique? No. <laughs> Is his athleticism the kind of player you'd create max issues for? No. He plays well with LeBron. Again, so did Matthew Della Vidova, who got paid. And where is he? Also, Austin Reeves is 25 because he stayed in college forever. So as a young player, you're like, you know, he's really pretty heady for a young player. That's because he's four years older than a lot of these 19, 20, 21-year-olds who are making mistakes. He stayed at Oklahoma forever. I like Austin Reeves. But people are always more loyal to the things they find. It feels special. You had the eye of a baseball scout. I'm the same way. I remember a couple, it was about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I was so proud of myself because I called it. I said, I'm going to tell you a player in the draft that nobody's ever seen play. I just fell upon him named T.Y. Hilton. He was a wide receiver for like a directional school in Florida or something. And they played Alabama and I got some highlights and I'm like, damn, he's beating Alabama corners. I must have talked about that thing a hundred times. There's going to be a guy in the draft named T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton had a good career. I think he's still playing. But I... Obviously, I felt really empowered because, like, nobody talked about him before the draft. And that's my point. I like Austin Reeves. Ten points a game, not a dead-eye shooter. Lakers clearly do not trust him as a point guard. That's why there was Chris Paul rumors. LeBron most of the time has the ball. LeBron had a bad shooting year, so you got to give LeBron the ball because he beats everybody off the dribble, meaning Austin Rivers uh, uh, often on the floor with LeBron will play off ball. He's not a great shooter. Doesn't have great size. Doesn't have great twitchiness. His ability is for a young guy, plays well with LeBron, creates contact, gets to the free throw line. I like him, but I got to love guys. You got to give me something max ability, max size, max shooting to create cap discomfort. All right, saw this. So Bill Barnwell, ESPN guy, really, really good. Uh, he created a list. He's been doing this for years. That he, that he rates, as the league has pivoted to offense, he rates NFL teams 
based on wide receiver, tight end, and running backs. And um, what's really interesting, I'll give you the top 12 and see if you notice anything in the top 12. Okay, for our radio audience, I'll name them. San Francisco, Cincinnati, Philly, Seattle, Chargers, Vikings, Cowboys, Dolphins, Jags, Falcons, Raiders, Browns. Do you notice anything? 10 of 12 have an offensive coach. Offensive coaches convince GMs to draft more elite offensive guys in free agency, sign more offensive guys, and they also have an ability to develop at a higher level offensive guys. I believe, uh, I believe, as I've said several times, this is the number one cultural change happening in pro football. In, in basketball, it was small ball. It was three ball. It was analytics, right? Baseball, same thing. Home run strikeouts. Don't worry about, don't worry about strikeouts, fly ball out. Just swing for the fences. In a sport that's changed rules due to that gigantic check they had to write years ago, CTE, Made the game much safer, no hitting upstairs, less violent. It's good for the league, good for betting, good for fantasy, good for TV ratings. Also, for the five top defensive payrolls in the NFL, defensive coaches. And what has happened in the NFL, I think you'd be surprised. Most coaching contracts, you have no idea how much Belichick makes. In college, it's different. We all know what Saban makes, Harbaugh makes, Lincoln Riley makes. NFL Head coaches make a fortune. But you don't know how much Andy Reid makes. You don't know how much Belichick makes. But let me tell you, the contracts for the top NFL coaches now, the McVeighs, the Shanahans, the Reeds, the Belichicks, it's somewhere between 9 and $16 million. And the GMs still make a million and a half. So who do you think the owner writing the check is going to listen to? He's going to listen to the coach on draft day. McVeigh has the power in the room, not less need. Shanahan, huge power. Zach Taylor, increasing power. So as coaches make more, it's like any corporate synergy. Two guys in a room, two women in a room, one making seven times more. The guy writing the check, who does he see more valuable? So increasingly, if you do not have the ability to draft and develop offense, you're like a cash business in 2023. You're like an all-cash business. First, I can't take you seriously. Second, there's limitations how great you'll be. That's nothing against Pete Carroll. That's nothing against Mike Tomlin or Sean McDermott. Ten of the top 12, running backs, tight ends, wide receivers, offensive coaches. By the way, the bottom of the rankings, three of the bottom four, defensive coaches. The middle of it, 13 to 22, is littered with defensive coaches. And so as coaches have made more, have more power, they are able to lean in the owner, lean in the war room, lean pre-draft free agency and get their guys. And they're winning their divisions and winning playoff games and getting to the Super Bowl. It is the cultural change in the sport. Bill Barnwell, check it out today. 10 of the top 12 offensive coaches. Belichick Brady, all those years, never had dinner. The reality is it's a different language. They go different ways in the locker room. Defensive guys often are best friends with defensive guys. Offensive guys, friends, the quarterback with receivers. Offensive linemen. Look at Brady's career. Gronk, close to. Offensive linemen. Edelman. Guys he was taking to the Derby. Wasn't mostly defensive guys. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.